Welcome to this micro learning session on Airflow Plus Powder. My name is Dr. Marcel Denet and I'm involved in powder for more than 19 years. I'm the brain behind the Airflow Plus Powder. You know, the Airflow Plus Powder is part of the GBT, the Guided Biofilm Therapy. Powder is really key and it empowers the treatment and therefore it's important to better know what is behind the powders. Often you see a lot of different powders in the market with different structure, different composition. How can you know which kind of powder you have to use? And in order to understand how it works, we need to go down to the grain property. There are different ways to describe them. First of all is the morphology. If we think about a powder, we think about round sphere. But in the reality, powder are never round. They have different shapes, different morphology. Maybe you can ask by yourself, who cares? Anyway, it's so small, we don't see the shape of the powder. So let's take the example of a football ball, a round ball. Now, if I give it to you a cubic ball to play football, does it work? No. And so you can understand, morphology is really important. We have the second step, which is the size. We have bigger, or smaller particles, 14 microns, 40 microns. But what is the impact of this size? So let's take the example now in the real world. You have a tennis ball, you can play tennis with it. Now, if I'm giving to you basketball to play tennis, does it work? No. And you understand? Changing the size will change the properties. It's the same with the powder. And then we have a particle size distribution. You have particle size distribution, bigger particles, smaller particles. And that is a nightmare for the powder expert to find the right characteristic, knowing that changing the size will change the impact of the powder. You have different other aspects, like the agglomeration, the contamination. We have also the density, an important aspect. If I use, for example, a tennis ball, I throw it on the wall, does it work? Not a problem. But now, using a bowling ball and throw it on the wall, does it work? You will damage the whole surface. And so you can understand, with the powder properties, the density is a real important characteristic. We have the hardness, we have the solubility, we have all the aspects related to health safety, and the last and not the least is the powder flavor. It needs to be good enough for the patient. If you have a powder with an awful taste, your patient will say, yes, maybe it was a good treatment, but do not use it again on me because I hate this taste. And so you understand, we have different characteristics to define the powder, and so it's quite important to look at the right characteristic. In order to understand the difference between the subgingival powder and the supragingival powders, we have the main characteristic, which are the size. Subgingival powders will be be used on dentine, on gum, will hit the gum often, and so it needs to be really small to have a minimal impact, to not add some pain to the patient, and to be minimal invasive, to reduce abrasivity. And the second aspect is the density. It needs to be light, and the plus powder is a powder which is the lightest material with the smallest size in order to be used for 95% of the cases. And then we have the supragingival powders, which is the airflow classic. These powders are heavier, bigger in size, and this is used only for supragingival because it risks to abrade the surface on dentine, for example. And therefore, PLUS is really defined to be used on dentine for supragingival treatment. To summarize, with the PLUS powder, we have a really light material. And this light material makes it minimal invasive. This material is also small in size. Small in size means that you do not feel the impact. And so you have the highest patient comfort. It's a soluble material, which is really safe for the usage. Thank you very much for watching and don't miss the next micro learnings.